Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. Hell yeah. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. Leg out. What up, everybody? Uh, my title for the show is Trouble in North Korea, and then I put a question mark. Shocking. Uh, it's a good thing I was sitting down when I heard this. You know, um, the, the, the thing I'm always curious of is how are things going to play out according to your predictions? And I always predict who's going to win an election, and I am never right. I I've lost so many bets on you know, who's going to be president. I, this time, I'm like, you know, Hillary's going to win. She's got it. Lock, stock, and barrel. Lost. I remember uh, George Bush. Yeah, I thought, I thought, oh, gosh, he's not going to win. You know, it ain't going to happen. And lo and behold, he wins. Um, and uh, I just cannot get it right. So it's it. you're right about the facts a lot of times but some of these outcomes who knows it's just like the super bowl you know good luck predicting it uh, especially as of late um and i try to think about okay how am i going to predict what's going to happen let me look into my crystal ball with north korea and i wonder if, if with all of the the disdain for trump uh a lot of people have a, a little bit of problems with them. Some people have a huge problem with them. Problem with them. Some people uh, hooked on phonics didn't work for them, like me. And so I'm stumbling over my words. And I think if you could get to where you're balanced uh, on, with your opinion about them, you'll have a clear outcome of of what's going to happen. And I tend to think that I. I have a lot of problems with them. I've had problems with them, but I've had problems with George Bush. I've had problems with Obama. I have had problems with everybody. So I tend to put the problems with the person aside as much as I can. And when I when I debate people um, or talk to them, I say just pretend like he's a city manager. You're hiring a city manager, and it's not okay did he cheat on his wife and did this that because if you're real close to him of course that's too much to bear you you'd say to hell with him i'd rather him not have a, a pot to pee in you know and uh but you don't want him as a let's say you're a mayor and now you you hire somebody and it could affect the lives of your city if he happens to be a really good uh, city manager versus somebody that's like from the city of bell who's about as corrupt as a city manager for bell um it's only the only uh and what is it um my brain's just slowing down anymore um it's mostly because i'm driving and i just got cut off by a little Subaru. Shocking, I know. Anyway, the, the, the only parallel, I think, is that it, it, you got these cities that are, that are so corrupt, and I'm thinking, okay, now what if these people were, were really good people, and they just slowly lost uh, the ability to manage a city? And you know, so that's what I try to do with the president. I'm saying, okay, let's... let's have a clear slate. I mean, sure, people that say, oh, yeah, you love Trump, you know, well, doesn't matter what I say, I'm not going to change your mind anyway. Um, and I think we all need to get to the point where we're, we're judging people based on information. I, I, I told my mom the other day, I go, we need to get to the point where, let's say we're building a freeway and you get like Elon Musk to come in and he's like, okay, this is how traffic works. This is how cars work with traffic. And this is where it's going to be in the future. Da -da 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 -da. 
And you say, all right, you're a smart guy. Everything sounds good. It's worked for you in the past. Uh, maybe get out a couple smart guys and uh, let's do it. Or we could say, hmm, what, what do you mean? Oh, wait, Elon Musk, you're the tree hugger or you're the, you know what I mean? And then you start attacking him and personal and, but no, we just need the information and what's going to help. And I, I think to, to bring it kind of full circle is with, uh, with everybody that doesn't like Trump, I'm wondering if a lot of the world like Russia and China, they figure, okay, he's they have their own problems are working out and nobody likes anybody. So it's not really us against them because there's so much disarray in the country that it's like, we're beating ourselves up. We don't need, um, to, for another country to do it. We're doing a fine job. Uh, we don't even, you know, it's like back in the day you have your propaganda machines in, in world war two. And, you know, so then you build up your team America and which is a pretty cool movie if you've never seen it before you you build up the uh your your country's ego and this that and the other and then i think sometimes that bolsters people's hate too so it's a weird thing it's like yeah you need your nationalism to hold your country but i think it works against you and uh, you know the way uh china and russia is kind of coming around to this i think it may have helped trump the, just the fact that he's not beloved by everybody um that that they <laughs> believe me nobody's envious of his position right now no other uh, politician and uh so it's easier for them to uh kind of uh allow him to, to save face a little bit because they know he's struggling um then you got kim jong-un who's i what is his what is he thinking i i, I wonder what his end game is in that you know how could this work out well for him um i know a lot of these leaders what they do is they anytime you're a big country let's say you're you're china and you have taiwan next to you there's no reason your country cannot be as uh as profitable and as uh uh I mean, gosh, Taiwan is, is you go there and it's a, a it, it's a city that just has, you know, everything going for it. Um, it has the economy, it has, um, you know, it's the modernization and, you know, they, they, they don't lack anything. Um, and then you go to China and I think in the Olympics, they just, they pretty much, uh, they, they knew where the cameras were going to be. And then they said right outside the, the, panoramic view of the camera if like the camera is to pan back you just see the uh, the poverty there and um when these people they hear about taiwan let's say the chinese are gonna, like hey man well how come we're not like this country so you you have to distract them with an enemy you say oh it's it's taiwan's fault it's uh it's it's america's fault and you know you got north korea their army i think it, it's so um malnutritioned that they had to lower the um the height to get in the army um the restriction because it used to be you had to be i don't know what it was four foot two or whatever and or four foot four and then they had lower to four foot two um just because they, they didn't have any tall people anymore just the malnutrition was affecting the generations like that um and uh you know it, it does trickle down and uh so you got you people starving i remember that that movie um is the comedy movie uh, i forget what it was but um where they go there and and they uh they go to north korea they're trying to assassinate um kim jong un or il i don't remember when the movie took place but and you had these grocery stores and then they looked in the grocery stores and everything was plastic and i think a lot of that is true um they try to prop it up for everybody and you know these people are like wait a minute we're we're in line for food and and we don't have health care and you know here in south korea they're shipping out kia cars and um making computers i think samsung's a south korean company and um so before these people turn on uh the leader and and pretty much just have a coup and did what they did to Qaddafi, um they they are distracted by war we need america it's america's fault that we're hurting because they take the world's resources everybody's like yeah yeah and then they start their nationalism they have to do it 
and and I think when things are that bad, and you know he's living large, and and he has his dad's RX seven collection that he has to um, keep up. I'm sure it takes a lot of work. The son, I'm sure he has to polish all the cars and keep all the batteries charged. Um, and then everybody uh, is looking at him, and he, he has to do something. So he's just, that's the only thing I could think of is, okay, let's start a war because no nobody's going to, America's not going to bomb us, um, right? And, you know, he may... Uh, he may have to go through with this and he may have to suffer the consequences. I think, I think if he does, uh, launch those ICBMs just off the coast of Guam, uh, you know, he will have an interesting, uh, headline the next day, um, in that, uh, problem solved. I, I think we will go after every nuclear, uh, facility they have, the, the centrifuges and the, and the, the ICBMs, the, the, the launch sites and, um, and it'll be easy for us because it's, a, it's a, a a target. It's a military target. They they struck first. It'll it'll probably put them back in the Stone Age. And you know, obviously, we can't use a nuclear uh, option. Nor would would I, I think that would be a whole. Gosh, man, you talk about um, the fallout. Uh, no pun intended. But you you border Russia um, and China. You know, North Korea. So you can't you can't mess with the atmosphere um you know and then plus the, the millions of innocent people that would be affected in one way or another but i think if we just did that those moab bombs mother of all bombs um on these airfields uh i think that's why we uh we dropped one just it was for north korea to say all right you want to really keep testing your nuclear um arsenal this bomb is about the size of your airfield um, that we just did uh, to kill probably two ISIS members, um, and go ahead and size it up. And and I I think that's that's where we're at. You know, we're gonna have to do something, but I don't. It, it does show our resolve to for other countries. Um, you know, if they're thinking, okay, what's going on over there? Is America gonna pull the trigger? Um, you know, I, I think if we just go in and bomb military targets, I think nobody's going to get too terribly upset, especially if they strike first. Um, you know, if we start other things, that's going to be an issue. Um, so you think about, uh, if, if, I mean, America is is so, our army, army is so good and so, so big, but it's just, you know, the problem is, is we got these weapons now that, maybe the humans shouldn't have you know the the nuclear it's it's like having a time machine you know it, you, you know it's it's you put it in enough people's hands and somebody's going to screw something up and you know i think we're at the point where we do have to stop these people um these dictators from having nuclear weapons and and i'm sorry yeah it's going to offend people say well you got them and i'm like okay well the analogy i used uh, today talking to somebody is let's say you take away all the guns in America, and I mean all of them, that would be the worst thing you could do. And it, it, here's an example is you're a, a drug dealer or whatever, pick your advice, um, and you're, uh, you're doing whatever, and you see a group of people over there, you go over there and, and uh, you, you sell them drugs, and then... Um, somebody sees it and they call the cops cops show up and you say what are you going to do and he said well i'm going to hit you with a stick and, and the guy's like well i got a stick too and uh or i got a knife and so the cop's like so you ain't got a gun and you're like oh well cops could have guns well okay now so now you're saying the good guys could have guns and you know if it, that's fine and i think the good guys should have more guns because now the drug dealer, he's not going to challenge the cop. If, if the drug dealer does not have a gun, but the cop does, that's the safest uh, situation. The SWAT team, if the SWAT team was evenly um, armed as a, a bunch of drug dealers, it would, it would be war. I mean, right now, the SWAT team, they just go in there, and usually it's one guy with a gun. They take him out. Every once in a while, we lose one, and uh, you know, it's a horrible thing, but... Uh, but that's when we know the situation and and they are outgunned. So imagine if 
if the SWAT team had to go in a building, but everybody in the building had 